I'm emotional today. It's been an emotional week. It's an emotional time. Um, my emotions take me back to childhood, where every 4th of July was a, a contest between my mother and her former self to see what kind of hot pants she was going to make this year for her two little girls. <laughs> would, would they be white with red and white stripes, or would they be blue with blue and white stripes? What kind of bell bottoms would she make for her little girls? Every year she outdid herself with the patriotic clothing. So I can't get to 4th of July with, without thinking of mom and her Singer sewing machine and me having to thread needles and hem. I got to hem. Lots of stab marks on my fingers from <laughs> hemming clothes. Of course, I'm taken back to my childhood and I'm thinking about all of those barbecues. Time for all the kids to get together, play badminton in the backyard, which seemed so big when we were little. It was like it was a huge backyard, not so much but big enough to hit the badminton. Um, uh, I know, yep, I just can't talk this morning. <laughs> the birdie around, smash it around, and die for the, for the points. Um, and dad making barbecue and mom making potato salad and boiling corn, and all of us listening to Stevie Wonder all night long, <laughs> listening to the adults talk trash when they play bid whist, slamming the cards down and having Boston's, y'all know? What, some of you all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> okay. That, that's what it was. That's how it was. That's how it was. And you grow up and you, you get more conscious of all the things that are in the world that, that make some of that shiny holiday less, less shiny. You know that the Declaration of Independence and the Founding Fathers didn't have you in mind when they wrote those documents. You know that when they left their nation to come to this nation, to escape religious persecution that they didn't have in mind um, setting folks like me free. We know that, um, that July 5th, 1827, 4,000 African Americans marched down Broadway here in New York to celebrate that slavery had been ended here in this state. And we now know that Frederick Douglass, who was asked by this big, fancy bunch of Republican women to speak to them about Emancipation Proclamation, refused to speak on the 4th of July, but instead chose the 5th of July to speak and ask the question, what does the 4th of July have to do with the enslaved African anyway? He was blistering in his critique and absolutely unmitigatedly kicking the tail out of all of the pastors who he felt just blessed that holiday anyway and would not stand against the powers and principalities. So I have a lot of emotion about Independence Day. All those lovely childhood memories and adult sophisticated critique, the hope and dream that our nation stands for that isn't fulfilled, a dream that is a nightmare for so many. I went to a barbecue in my neighborhood in New Jersey the other day with my beautiful Republican friends. Hello, beautiful Republican friends, um, who are the sweetest people who mow your lawn and shovel your snow and take care of your world and watch your house when you're here. But when we get to politics, you know, there's a little rub, uh, not the kind that I mean on the barbecue ribs rub now, but another kind of rub where, you know, I'm like, oh, the immigrants at the border, it's terrible. And someone says, yeah, but you can't let 6,000 people come in here. We can't afford that. O okay. <laughs> uh, all right. But yet there was room for you, you know. Or, or even if we don't think we should have 6 million people come in, how inhumane can we be in the way that they're being treated less than the way we treat our dogs and cats? I have a lot of emotion about this holiday. And I picked this psalm to read before all the emotions happened. And I found myself thinking, um, looking at Twitter and looking at Facebook and looking at Instagram, which is my new thing to look at. Thank you, Kalisma. All of the comments and the anger and the vitriol around the immigration thing, and the who's a Christian and who's not a Christian, and who, all the people who support the president's policies because, because they believe that he is ordained by God to rule the nation. And if it were not true, he would not have won the election. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
all of the people who fight because somebody says Jesus is from Palestine and it just freaks them out. In fact, he's from Palestine. Ancient Palestine, borders change, things change, but there's war and anger and violence and hatred over geographic boundaries that were in the first century. Somebody say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> and I found myself thinking, where's the hope? Where's the joy? Where's the, where's God? And then I read the psalm that I had picked so long ago and read it again and I was like, oh, here it is. Here's Israel praising God, not because everything was juicy and fabulous, but praising God because God is God. Okay. Israel, Israel took me to church reading this psalm again. I mean, took me to church literally. Because this psalm that Veronica and Carlos read is a hymn. It's a hymn with three stanzas and then a personal testimony song. The first stanza is all about making a joyful noise, noise unto God. It's the congregation walking up from the lowlands to the temple. And as they're walking, they're praising God. They're praising God. They're saying, sing the glory of God's name. Give God praise. How awesome are your deeds, God. And when they're walking up the temple to go to the temple mount to say the prayers, to sing the praise, they're remembering their God the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who was able to make barren bones give birth, a God who was able to open the sea and part the land so people could get through and be emancipated from slavery. Oh, oh, this is that God. This is the God. This is the God who is so awesome that even God's enemies are forced to stop and notice how good God is. And in the second stanza of the song, the songwriter's a little slick because he says God turned the sea, the yah, excuse me, the yam into dry land, the nahar, the river, into dry land, and the yam and the nahar are names for the Babylonian god that the god Baal defeated. So embedded in the psalm is this sense that these two gods are lower than Baal, and Baal is lower than Jehovah. And God will kick your tail if, you, if you're not on the side of justice. I mean, this psalm is saying God is bigger and badder and vaster than any God. Even the one in the White House who thinks he's God. And even the people who think he's God. God is more profound than that is what the psalmist is praying. He's saying God has kept us among the living and didn't allow us to die. And even going on to say this, when the bad things happen, when the trouble happens, when the trials happen, when the pain happens, quote, you brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water and you brought us out. Now look. That's not my theology. Let me tell you plainly. I do not walk around thinking that God put us in the net, put the stuff on our head, walked us through the fire, and walked us through the water. I, Jackie, personally do not think that. But the psalmist prays this out of the psalmist experience that there was no trial, no tribulation, no fire, no burning, no torture, no anything no turmoil that stopped God from snatching the psalmist out in the end. Are you with me? In my emotions this week, talking to friends, listening to loved ones whose lives are just burdened, not only with the politic of America, not only with the social craziness of America, but when you've got that kind of junk going on and your personal life is also a little funky, your baby's not strong, you're working too hard, you don't have a job and you need one, you're praying for your grandma to live and she's in a critical condition, you, you got friends that you can't trust. What I'm saying is when your funnel, your personal junk is already hard and then you add America on top of it, that you're having a bad day. <laughs> Amen? You are having a super bad day. And the psalmist's prayer not 
can't check you because I'm just emotional. But the psalmist's prayer is there is no place where God isn't going to come and get you and take care of you. There's nothing, no how, that God won't be a bridge over troubled water. God hears our prayers and responds. Wow. God, I needed that reminder this week. I needed a reminder this week that I am not in this by myself. I needed a reminder this week that the testimony of the current second is not the only one, that God has what C.S. Lewis would call God's unbounded now to heal us, fix us, save us, rescue us, and help us rescue one another, that God's business isn't finished. And so I was thinking, what does freedom mean? And I, I think I'm saying freedom's a process. That freedom is not an instantaneous act. Amen. But it is a, an ongoing, what's that verb? Transitive verb. We keep becoming free. We keep getting free. We keep freeing each other. We keep liberating each other. Ordinary women work to free us. Ordinary men and children work to free us. They go to Puerto Rico and work to free us. They march all night on town Fifth Avenue and work to free us. They stand out here a thousand strong and shout to free us. And they do little teeny tiny kindnesses every day to free us. Oh, freedom is not one and done. We are joined by a holy other in the business of liberation. And each and every one of us has something we can do, a song to sing, a prayer to say, a child to raise, a hand to hold, a protest to make, an ambassador to be, a fist to hold up in the air, to say, not now, not on my watch. This is who we are. We are psalmists singing and praying and testifying to each other and to the world that it might look like we're having a really bad day. But God's eternal promise is our liberty, our freedom, justice rolling down right, like righteousness, like a mighty stream. Each and every one of us in our place being liberated by love. That's what freedom means to me on this day. I sure hope that matters to you because it matters to me. Amen.